Radical operations are similar to polynomial operations in the fact that when we add or subtract polynomials, like when we add or subtract radicals, we can only combine like terms together. When we're multiplying or dividing, we do not have to have like terms. We multiply coefficients and then we multiply the variables, or we divide the coefficients, we divide the variables. Let's begin with the multiplication. So if radicals have the same index, we're multiplying, let's say, a square root times a square root, or two cube roots together, then we're going to multiply the coefficients, multiply the radicands, and then check to see if we can simplify, if, is there a perfect square left in that radicand? So my coefficient on this first one is one and one. So one times one is one, five times two is 10. Four times the coefficient of one is four, three times seven is 21. So there is no perfect square we can remove. Same thing with 10, but we cannot remove a perfect square. Four times two is eight, five times 10 is 50. We can pull a 25 out of there, square root the 25 and we get five. Five times eight is 40 and we're left with the two in the radicand. Two times three is six, times four is 24. Four times two is eight, eight times two is 16. 16 is a perfect square. So when we take the square root of 16, we're left with four times 24 gives us 96. There is no more radical. We have a whole number in that particular question. Have the same process with division. So we're going to divide coefficients with coefficients. One divided by one is one. 50 divided by two is 25. 25 is a perfect square, so square root that, and we're going to end up with a value of five. My next one, one divided by one is one. 48 divided by six is eight. Divide a four out of there, the square root of four is two, and we're left with the two in the radicand. 16 divided by eight is two. 10 divided by two is five. There is no perfect square in five. That is our final answer. Thinking back to polynomials, if we had a monomial times a binomial, we distributed that in and then got our values. Radicals works the same way. So we're gonna multiply the first coefficient by the first term's coefficient. One times one gives us that one. Three times five when we multiply the radicands gives us 15. And then we're gonna multiply the square root of three times the square root of two. So one times one gives us that one. 3 times 2 is 6, and then check, is there any perfect squares that we can pull out of there? If not, we're good. Same thing here. Now, with the second term, we have a 1 times a negative 2 is negative 2, and we have the radicand of 7. There is no radicand here. We could have the square root of 1, if you wanted to think about it that way. 7 times 1 is just that 7. And again, check to make sure there is no perfect square in the radicand that we can remove. All right, 3 times 1 is 3, 5 times 6 is 30, Distribute this now into the second term. 3 times 2 is 6. 5 times 10 is 50. Pull out a 25. The square root of 25 is 5. 5 times 6 is 30. And we're left with a 2 in the radicand. And then here we're going to multiply that term outside into the bracket. 4 times 5 is 20. 2 times 3 is 6. 4 times negative 2 is 8. 2 times 6 is 12. 4 times 3 is 12, and again, there is no radical here, so it's just going to be 12 times the square root of 2. 4 times 4 is 16. 2 times 2 is 4, which is a perfect square. So when I square root this, I get 2. 2 times 16 is 32. There is no perfect square in 2 that I can remove, nor is there in 6. I can remove a 4 from here. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 times negative 8 is negative 16, and I have a 3 in the radicand. And then just double check, none of these are like radicals, so there's nothing I can do to simplify that further. Now think back to polynomials. What did you do if you multiplied a binomial times a binomial together? That's right, you foiled it. So this is just an acronym to help us remember that we're gonna multiply every term by every other term. So we're going to begin with the first term in each bracket. So one times one is a coefficient of one, five times two is 10. Outside terms, so think about if this is like a house, this is on the outside, this is on the outside. We're gonna multiply one times one to get a coefficient of one, five times seven to get 35. Next come the terms on the inside. So they're safe and warm on the inside of the house. And again, three times two gives us that radicand of six. And finally, you're going to multiply the last term in each bracket together. One times one is again a coefficient of one. Three times seven is 21. And then quickly check to see if there's any perfect squares that we can remove or if we have any like radicals that we can combine. There are neither, so that is our final answer. The same process for the next one. We have a binomial times a binomial, so we're going to foil those out. 
to remove the brackets. And then we're going to take a look at the radicand. So I can see that I can divide out a 9. The square root of 9 is 3 times 2 is 6, leaving me with a 2. There's no perfect squares in 30. And I can also remove 25 square root. It is 5 times 6 is 30, and I have that 2. I now have like radicals here and here. The radicand stays the same. Add the coefficients. And again, here and here, the radicand stays the same, negative 4 plus negative 3 is negative 7. And then you just want to watch here, when we multiply the last terms together, we have a negative times a negative, that's where we're getting that positive. And in the last one, we have a binomial squared. So that means we have the base times itself, we have the exact same thing in each of those brackets. So we're going to, I just wrote it out here so it's easier to see. So we're gonna multiply the first terms together, three times three is nine, two times two is four, right there, which is a perfect square. Multiply the outside, three times negative two is negative six, two times three is the radicand of six. Inside terms, we're going to have negative 6, and the radicand again is 6, and then the last terms. Now watch, you've got a negative times a negative. We're going to have a positive. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. Now this is a perfect square, so square root this, and we're going to have 2 times 9 is 18. We also have a perfect square over here. Square root this. 3 times 4 is 12. So we have a term of 12 plus a term of 18 gives us 30. Negative 6 minus 6 is negative 12. The radicand stays the same. And these are not like terms, so that is our final answer. Now, you might also remember the shortcut for when we're squaring a binomial. Square the first term, so we're going to have 9 times the square root of 4. Square root that 4 to get 2. 2 times 9 is 18. Double the product. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Times 2 is going to give us that coefficient of negative 12. 2 times 3 is 6, that radicand stays the same, square the last term. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 square rooted is 3, times 4 will give us that 12, add it to that first term, and we get 30. In the beginning, you may want to write it out, but then as you get faster, you'll see how to do more of that mentally. And conjugates. So remember, in a conjugate, we have 1 plus, 1 minus. So those signs are the opposite, but the terms are the same. If we go to FOIL this out, so I've written it out the long way so we can see what's happening here. We will always, with conjugates, be multiplying a coefficient by the exact same thing, and then a radicand by the exact same thing. So this will always be a perfect square. When we square root 4 in this case, we're going to get a 2. I'm going to multiply the outside, and again, we're going to see that the outside product and the inside product, because those terms are the same, one will be a negative, one will be a positive. So these are like radicals. Negative 12 plus 12 is going to cancel out. We're going to get 0 times the square root of 10. So those are now gone. And that will always happen because we're always going to get the negative product and the positive product that are adding together. Last terms when they're multiplied, again, because we're multiplying the same radicand by the same number, we're going to get a perfect square always. So the square root of 25 is 5. 5 times negative 9 is negative 45. So we're only left with the first term and the last term. So let's go ahead and multiply these out. So 16 times 2 is 32. And the last one, negative 9 times 5 is negative 45. 32 minus 45 will give us a value of 13. And always, because that outside and inside product zero out, because the first and last terms will always be perfect squares, we will always, with conjugate radicals, end up with a rational number. So there will be no radicals in our final solution. One word of caution here. Conjugate radicals are not the same as a binomial squared. So with conjugates, we have that one plus, one minus, we end up with a rational solution. Binomial squared, we will still usually have radicals in the final answer. Dividing radicals is the same process as multiplying radicals, where we're going to divide the coefficients, divide the radicands, and then simplify. In order for a radical to be in simplest form, we can't have any removable factor in the radicand. We also have to make sure that we do not have any fraction or decimal in the radicand, and we cannot have a radical in the denominator. So if we take a look at the first example, if I were to go 15 divided by 2, I would get 7.5. That's a decimal. So I need another way that I can simplify this because I can't just leave this radical on the bottom. As soon as we divide a number by itself, we have a value of 1. 
As soon as we divide a radical by itself, we have a value of one. If we multiply any number by one, we end up with that same number. Any value multiplied by one, we get the same value back. Multiplying by one does not change that value. Those two concepts combined will allow me to now simplify this. So I can't just straight divide, I get that decimal in the radicand. So we're going to multiply by the same radical that we have in the denominator. I need to eliminate that radical in the denominator and the way that I can do that is by multiplying this value by itself. 2 squared now becomes the square root of 4, which is a perfect square. Multiplying by any number other than 1 is going to change the original value of the question. So the only number that we can multiply by is 1. What makes this 1? Well, we have to put the same thing in the numerator. So the square root of 2 divided by the square root of 2, this is a value of 1. When I multiply by 1, I'm not changing the original question. So now we can go ahead and multiply. When we multiply fractions, we're going to multiply the numerators. The square root of 15 times the square root of 2 will give us the square root of 30. And then on the denominator, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 gives us the square root of 4. We already established that 4 is a perfect square. That's the point of rationalizing. So we can go ahead and simplify this down to the square root of 30 divided by 2. So now we're going to check. Is there a perfect square in here that we can remove? No. I don't have any fractions or decimals, so that's good. And then I don't have that radical in the denominator anymore. And then just check. We have a 1 as a coefficient and then a 2. If those can reduce we want to reduce them but in this case we're good so this is our final answer we call this rationalizing the denominator because we get the denominator to be a rational number it's no longer irrational we've eliminated that radical so in our second example again we need to eliminate this radical in the denominator so I'm going to multiply by that radical the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 gives me the square root of 25 so I know I'm going to have just 5 in the denominator once we square root that 25 3 times 1 is 3, and I have times the square root of 5. There is no more perfect square in here. There's no more radical in the denominator, and I cannot reduce 3 fifths, so this is our final answer. Now with this one here, because I do have a variable, I need to begin by stating the restriction. So if we take a look at this, it is a square root. Normally we would say because we're multiplying that x is going to be greater than or equal to 0. However, this variable is in the denominator. We cannot divide by 0, and so if I put a 0 here, that's that's going to make my denominator 0. We can't divide by 0. So our restriction is going to be x is greater than 0. Make sure you do not put the equal sign because we cannot have that denominator equal to 0 and x is a real number. I need to again eliminate this radical in the denominator and I'm going to check first of all if I can eliminate it by dividing those two radicals. I can't so in this case I will have to rationalize. Now we can choose to multiply by 2 times the square root of 7x on the top and the bottom or we can just get rid of that radical by multiplying by the square root of 7x. I'm going to do that because we have less simplifying to do down the road, but if you wanted to put a 2 here and a 2 here, they will end up dividing out. Square root of 6 times the square root of 7x is the square root of 42x. 2 times 1 is 2, and I know square root of 7x times the square root of 7x is the square root of 49 squared, which when we take the square root gives us that 7x. Multiply those two together on the denominator to get 14x, and then check to see is there any perfect squares in here that we can remove. There are not, and because I have a coefficient of 1, 1 divided by 14x does not reduce. Now, I cannot cancel those x's. This is x, this is the square root of x, so just make sure you're careful with that. Now there's different ways that we can go about something like this. I would probably simplify each of those radicands first of all, so my numbers aren't so large. So when we do that, we end up with those values. And then I take a look, square root of 3 divided by the square root of 2, that's still not divisible. So I know I'm going to have to rationalize. So when I do that, we end up with this. And then take a look at your whole numbers here. Just like reducing fractions, what's the largest number that's divisible by both 12 and 36? So we can divide each by 12. 12 divided by 12 is 1. 36 divided by 12 is 3 and then we have that square root of 6. So you are fully simplified when there are no perfect squares in the radicand, 
no radicals on the denominator, and when those whole numbers are fully reduced. Now take a look at this one right here, and you're gonna notice that we now have a cubed root in the denominator. What do you think we're going to have to do, because there's no radical in the numerator, in order to eliminate that radical in the denominator? And if you said because it's a cubed root, we need to multiply by that value three times in order to eliminate the radical, you are absolutely correct. So this time we're gonna have the cubed root of 12, times the cubed root of 12 times the cubed root of 12. When we take the cubed root of that value, we get 12. And then in the numerator, 6 times the cubed root of 12 times the cubed root of 12 again is going to give us 6 times the cubed root of 144. And then I can pull a perfect cube of 8 out of here. So the cubed root of 8 is 2. Put that on the top. 2 times 6 is 12. And I still have the cubed root of 18 in the radicand. And then last thing we're going to do, take a look at those whole numbers. 12 divided by 12 is 1. So those are going to end up cancelling out. And we're going to be left just with that radical in the numerator. Our final answer is the cubed root of 18. And the last piece that we're going to take a look at is if we have a binomial in the denominator. So the first thing we're going to do is bracket this binomial and remember our goal is to eliminate any radicals in the denominator and because I have no radicals in the numerator I know that I have to rationalize. We're going to multiply by the conjugate because remember when we multiply two conjugates together we end up with a rational number. When we go to do this we're going to have two times the first term and then two times the second term so we're going to distribute that in and we are going to foil the denominator. So in the numerator we have 2 times the square root of 6 plus 2 times the square root of 3. Now I sped this up. I know I'm going to multiply the first two terms together and that's going to give me that perfect square of 6. I also know that my outside product plus my inside product will zero out and then a negative times a positive is a negative 3 times 3 is 9. 9 is a perfect square. We square root that 9 and we get a value of 3. So then in the denominator we have a rational number. 6 minus 3 leaves us with 3 and then we have the numerator with no perfect squares that we can remove. Now you do need to take a look at your three whole numbers. We have a 2, a 2, and a 3. None of those are divisible by a number other than one, which isn't going to change the value. So that is our final answer. And again, we're going to bracket this denominator in order to rationalize. We're going to multiply by the conjugate. Same thing on the top so that this has a value of one. Distribute that square root of five in to get the numerator. Foil the denominator, and again, 3 times 3 is 9. 2 times 2 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 9 times 2 is 18, and then over here, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, 3 times 3 is 9, square root of 9 is 3, 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. So we have 18 minus 12 is 6, and then check, there are no perfect squares in the radicands, we cannot divide those whole numbers by anything other than 1, so we are done. For the grand finale, we have a binomial in the numerator as well as the denominator. It's okay to have a radical in the numerator for our final answer. We need to eliminate the radicals in the denominator. So it is the conjugate of the denominator that we are multiplying by. Because this is a plus, I'm multiplying by a minus, and I need the exact same thing on top. This gives me that value of 1. When I multiply by 1, I'm not changing the original question. So we need to go ahead and foil the numerator as well as the denominator. So we're going to end up with our rational number in the denominator. Now with the numerator, I know when I multiply my inside terms, the square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is the square root of 49. So I just square rooted that to get 7 right off the bat. Take a look at the radicands and we can see that there is a 9 that we can pull out of here. So I'm going to square root the 9 to get 3. 3 times negative 15 gives us that negative 45, and then we still have a 2 left in the radicand. So there are no more perfect squares in the radicands, there's no more radicals on the denominator, and none of those coefficients are going to be divisible by the same number. So that's good. The problem is we cannot leave a negative in the denominator. So we are going to pull the negative out of the denominator by essentially multiplying by a negative 1 to get a positive value, and then I need to do the same thing in the numerator to keep that balanced. We're going to distribute that negative into every term, thereby flipping the sign. So this was positive, it now becomes a negative, positive, and so on. So this is now our final answer.